Hello, everybody. It's Natalina here, and we're coming to you live from Natalina's Kitchen Italian Cooking School in Guelph, Ontario, Canada. So glad you could join us today. We're super excited to be carrying on our live stream for the second time this week, for our second week in a row. And um, as I've mentioned a few times already, we're here to help you get through this time. We're all safely at home and everyone's doing a little bit more cooking. Maybe you need a little bit of confidence, a little bit um, of kitchen skills to get you through this time. And that's what we're here for. OK, so I'm Natalina. This is my daughter, Laura. Laura's giving me a hand today as, you know, like a lot of kids, she's not in school. And I've got Stefano. He's our audio, audio visual tech expert uh, behind the camera there. Um, so he's giving you a little wave, but of course you can't see him. So we're ready to start. Chicken cacciatore. I sent out the list yesterday of some ingredients uh, to have ready if you want to follow along with us. So you could in fact follow along with us or when we're done streaming, this uh, will be uh, permanently on the YouTube channel. Natalina's Kitchen bringing home a back. I'll also share it on Facebook. Okay, so please feel free to go back and watch it again and uh, make this dish. Um, the thing that I like about chicken cacciatore is it's very easily adaptable. And it's one of these dishes that I don't really have a recipe. I have a recipe, but it kind of changes um, from time to time just based on what I have around. So I thought it'd be a perfect dish um, to teach you during this time. So what I've got here is um, some chicken pieces. So I kind of said, you know, chicken pieces as you wish, bone on or off the bone as you wish. Personally, bone on chicken has a lot more flavor. Dark meat chicken also has a lot more flavor, but by all means, if you prefer white meat, you could do that. So you could do boneless, skinless chicken breasts, especially if you were wanted to um, have a leaner option. Um, if you're going for a full flavor, I would uh, recommend uh, thighs and drumsticks, which is what I have here. And I'm gonna show you, these came as complete legs and I'm gonna show you in a minute how to cut those very easily, okay? Um, also, one of the other requirements was olive oil. Um, I don't know, we might have a technical issue, excuse yeah, me. Yeah, I think the mic is the wrong mic right now. Oh, Just, can people not hear me, do you think? Or? They can hear you, but I think it's through this one. Oh, okay, so tell you what, if you can't hear us, please give us a little message there for my tech well, uh, can I end it and then, person, sorry? Can I end it and restart it, because I'll have to Swap well, as long out. as they can hear us, it's all good. Okay. Yeah, so let's carry on. Um, Stefano's just concerned that maybe he didn't hook up the better quality mic. So maybe just give us a message uh, through to Stefano if you can't hear us. And if that's the case, then maybe we will switch out the microphones. So I'm going to carry forward here. And thank you for your patience. This is all kind of new to us. Um, so getting back to the chicken. So, okay, so you've got your chicken pieces. Uh, this was four complete legs, so uh, drumsticks and thighs. And really, it was like under $5. So this is a very economical choice. Um, but, you know, like I said, you can use whatever your preference is in terms of chicken. So you need chicken. Um, I have some virgin olive oil here. Extra virgin olive oil is fine. Or you going a blend of olive oils or even vegetable oil, okay? I've got some diced onion. This was a medium diced onion. I have some dry white wine, which is optional. So if you don't have any dry white wine, don't worry about it. Um, I've got one large carrot that's been diced. I have a nice uh, tablespoon of um, tomato paste. This again, uh, if you don't have it, you could substitute ketchup. And when we uh, use this, I'll explain why that'll work, okay? I have a little bit of dried oregano, which um, would be great. Hopefully most people have that in their cupboard. So at a minimum, you want a little bit of dried oregano for some spice. I've got one large garlic clove that's been minced, okay? I've got some fresh herbs, which are optional. We'll talk about those later. I have 128 fluid ounce tin of Italian plum tomatoes here, um, just a hole in the bowl here. Now, if you don't have those, you could use fresh tomatoes or grape tomatoes, um, about the equivalent. That was one of those little pints. Um, it'll just take a little bit longer to cook, but if you don't have any tinned tomatoes, uh, fresh tomatoes are an alternative. I have a little bit of chilies and that'll just be um, per taste at the end to add. I have a can of mushrooms that I've strained here. I really love to use fresh mushrooms, but I've been using canned the last couple of weeks because my fresh mushrooms don't keep very well. So I bought a number of tins of of uh, canned mushrooms that I can easily um, use in a number of recipes. So I've already strained those. Those are also optional. 
as are the sweet peppers. So I've got a sweet orange pepper that I've diced up into cubes and that is an option. Also the potato is an option. Okay, so I've cubed up some potatoes and I've got them sitting, well I peeled it and cubed them up. I've got them sitting in water and these are literally the last potatoes in my house. There was four potatoes. So we've got those, I've got salt and pepper. Okay, and um, we're gonna uh, start with the chicken, but before I get into that, I wanna tell you what we've got just over here with what Laura's gonna work on. So for those of you that joined us on Monday, we did a very simple noni focaccia. And um, with a lot of these streams, just because it's live, oftentimes we don't have time to actually show you the finished results. So I just post a photograph on, on Facebook of the finished uh, focaccia in this case. Well, I had an extra bag of dough. So just a little tip for you here. So what I did is I put the dough after it had risen the first time just in a plastic bag and I tossed it in the fridge until about an hour ago. So an hour, well, it's probably about an hour and a half ago now. So I took it out as I was getting ready for you today and I let it come to room temperature. Then Laura stretched it out here. And rather than doing two dinner plate size thin focaccias, we thought we'd switch it up and show you how to do it in a cast iron pan. So Laura lined the cast iron pan with some parchment paper. She oiled her hands again, just like we did the other day, and she formed it in there. So it's gonna be more like a bread, this one. It's gonna be a lot thicker. So it has now completed the second rise. We put more olive oil on the top, we put some plastic wrap on it and let it sit. So now Laura's gonna finish this with um, some coarse flaked sea salt. And uh, she's also gonna brush some olive oil on there as well. The oven's already preheated at 450 degrees. So we're gonna bake that because this chicken cacciatore needs some sort of a starch with it when you serve it. Whether it's potatoes in the actual chicken cacciatore, which I'll show you when to add those, or you could serve it over top of pasta, rice, or even polenta. Okay, you could of course even do like quinoa, uh, couscous, all kinds of ideas for starches, but it's also great with some beautiful crusty bread. So we thought we had the dough, we'd do that, and that way we could show you that you could in fact um, make up enough dough when you make your focaccia for a couple of times and put one in the fridge for a couple of days. Okay, do you have a question, Laura? Do you want me to flip the holes first? Yeah, go ahead. You're just gonna poke it in with your fingers. Then you're gonna put a little bit more um, olive oil on that and then sprinkle it with the salt and then in the oven it goes. Now the normally thin dinner plate size ones take about 25 minutes. So this is gonna take longer. It will not necessarily take double the time though. Um, and also to the fact that it's in a cast iron pan will um, change that time. So maybe what we'll do is maybe we'll check in on it at about 30, 35 minutes, okay? And of course we'll go by the color as well. Should have a nice golden color. Okay, so that's our little sideline there. Um, let's get back to our chicken cacciatore. So like I said, I had four complete legs here, which were drumstick and thigh. And I wanna show you, for the new cooks out there, I wanna show you how I prepared these. So these ones I already separated. This one here, what I wanna show you is, there's a joint in here and you can almost kind of crack it like that by just bending it. And then if you go in with a sharp knife, cut through, you'll kind of expose that bone. Okay, and now you know where to cut it, okay? Because of course you can't cut through the bone, okay? So now we have our drumstick and we have our thigh, but there's a couple of little pieces on here, little fatty bits that we want to get rid of. So I want to show you that. So that's like the little tail, I'm not gonna cut that off, that's garbage. And then if we flip it over, you can see there's a little bit of excess fat, okay? And I'm gonna cut that off as well. So now this can go in the garbage and our chicken is ready for seasoning, okay? So let me just lay these out. Actually, I'm gonna turn them upside down. It's kind of nice to get the skin down. Now, if you want, um, you could remove the skin off of the thighs if you like, or the uh, drumsticks, if that's what you choose. I like to leave it on there. We'll get some really nice color and some caramelization. If you again wanna you know, um, keep the, the fat low, then uh, you might want to remove them. You could of course use boneless, skinless thighs as well. I found myself when I was at the grocery store the other day, there was very little choice um, amongst chicken. So this is what I found. And like I said, because it is very economical, I thought it'd be a great place to start. So you want to season this pretty liberally. Okay. And seasoning is always your salt and pepper. Okay. So let's do salt. Let's do pepper. You wanted 25 minutes for the full culture? Um, we're going to check it. Tell you what, we'll check it at 25 and see where we're at. We'll show them how we'll take... Um, a look at it and look at the gold color, yeah. 
Dill asks, what kind of seasoning on the chicken? Oh, just salt and pepper, Dylan. That's a great question. Yeah, typically if I, if I say seasoning, it's usually salt and pepper. So we want to season each component as we go. So there we go. I'm happy to see you're with us, Dylan. Dylan is a very good friend of my cameraman, of Stefano. Dylan, did you make the focaccia? Or the fresh pasta last week? Did he say? We'll see. Okay, so this is seasoned. Let's get this. Can you do me a favor? Can you just get rid of that? And actually, you could probably take the olive oil there now, too. So we're just going to give it a little light here. So salt as well? Uh, yeah, that's the like salt. We should be through with that. Okay, so now what you want to do is... Let me just move this a little bit so you can see. I've got a heavy bottom pot here. Okay, this is a saucier, which you don't have to have. Really, any pot, um, but a nice, heavy... Thick bottom is nice because it distributes the heat really well, okay? And a saucier is a low um, kind of profile. So you can see how low this is. Um, and the reason I like to use it for this class is just so I can show you inside, okay? It's also um, lovely heavy bottomed as well, okay? So the first thing we want to do is we want to heat our pan, okay? So I typically start on high heat. Um, this is an induction burner, so it might perform a little differently than what you have at home, depending on your burner and also depending on the type of pot that you have, okay? So we always want to heat our pot, and then what we're going to do is we're going to add some of our olive oil to start browning this, okay? And Laura, I'm going to get you, while I'm doing that, I'm going to get you to hand crush. So these are our plum tomatoes. Remember, it's a 28-ounce can. I want you to hold with one hand and I want you to just crush it all up, okay? Okay, so we can feel that this is getting hot. Okay, so we'll probably we need a couple of tablespoons of oil. And if you were using like a really good quality extra virgin olive oil, if that's all you had, you might have to put a little, a uh, couple of drops of vegetable oil or canola oil in it, in it as well, just to give you a higher smoke point so it doesn't burn. Okay, so once it gets kind of shimmery in there, um, it's kind of hard to show you. And I'll tell you, we are working on a second camera for one on close-ups while we're doing this, but it's going to take us a little bit to get that delivered. So, okay, so we're heating our oil, and then uh, we'll just make sure it's good and hot before we put our first piece in. So basically what we want to do is brown this chicken. Okay, we want to get a really nice color on it. We'll get some caramelization happening, which is when the natural sugars are emitted um, from, in this case, the chicken, and that produces a lot of flavor, okay? So chicken cacciatore is kind of basically a braise. So it's kind of a two-part cooking method, uh, the first being a dry method where we're going to get some nice color on it. And I can see right now that, and actually if I tilt it up, you might have saw how it was kind of shimmery on there. So let's get, oh yeah, there we go. So let's get these in here. I'm gonna go skin side down with these ones. Okay, so this is not fully cooking it. This is only browning it, okay? So this is the first part of the cooking method. And I think I'm gonna put four in there. I'm gonna show you this. So just to see the distance. We don't wanna overcrowd the pan. We want some room in between because when you overcrowd the pan, what happens is, is you bring the temperature down of the oil, okay? So we want it good and hot. Uh, maybe a little bit less chunks, okay? That's personal preference to how chunky or how fine it is, okay? You can, if you don't like chunky, chunky tomatoes, you could use a pureed tomato or you could puree it with an American blender. Typically, though, chicken cacciatore is kind of a rustic dish, so I prefer kind of a chunky tomato. You can hear it? Oh, can you guys hear us okay? How about if you swap them out? Is it going to go down while you... Can't swap them. You can't swap them up. Sorry? I have to turn off. Bring it down. Well, we're not turning it off now. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. Okay, so I want to show you guys. See how we have some nice brown color on that? Mm -hmm. It's loud. I think we can fix it. Huh? I think we can fix it. It's loud. He called it and said, "Hold oh, two, and then it's Okay. Okay, so apparently we're having troubles with our microphone, and Stefano would like to stop the video and restart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue browning the chicken, 
And then when we come back for part two, we're going to pick it up from the brown chicken. He might need like two or three minutes to swap out the microphone because he's saying with this added noise of the browning that you may not be able to hear me. So just sit tight, okay? And come on back for part two, okay? We'll be really quick. Thank you. Yeah.